Welcome back Unity folks, it's James again with another part for the 3D platform gaming tutorial series. Today we're going to discuss audio. Um, this doesn't necessarily pertain directly to 2D only, it actually does pertain to pretty much all games. Um, but I'm going to teach you guys how to put some audio sounds in. First we're going to do a background soundtrack and um, loop it. Probably not going to sound very good, but then we're going to also put in a jumping sound for our player. Okay? so. Let's go to audio here, and you'll see I added in the audio folder, and I have two files that I've imported, the Kalimba, which I've unchecked 3D sound and applied, and Randomize, which I also don't want to be 3D, so I can uncheck that and apply. You'll see down here in the bottom right corner, we have some buttons along with our wave. We can uh, turn autoplay on, turn on the loop, or we can sample play the soundtrack. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Um, I've tried turning my speakers up as loud as I can, so hopefully you can hear it. Sorry if it's low audio. Um, so, let's start out by making the background music. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the main camera, okay? And we're gonna go to our view where we can see it. It is an orthographic camera. And what we're gonna do is, this has an audio listener attached. In order to make sound come out of an object, you need to go to Component, Audio, Audio Source, okay? Now that Audio Source has some settings on it. We want the background music to play on Awake, and we want it to loop. And then we can select our background music and stick it in there. It tells you that it's a 2D sound, and we're going to go ahead and turn the volume down. I'm going to set it to 0.5, okay? And if I go to this sound and I play it, it's just a big track of default music that comes with Windows 7, and I'm sure it is absolutely horrible. Um, so we've got our background music in our game now. That's it. That's all there is to it. Okay? So you can set the listener's distance and a whole bunch of other stuff. I just tend not to mess with anything except the volume, priority, pitch, and these presets. Okay, if I play my game now, the background music starts. Okay, so that's the game with the background music. Now what we need to do on our first person controller, we have our FPS input controller script, and we have our texture flip script that we added in. We turned off mouse look. This is a normal first person controller that we've converted to 2D. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add another script in for the audio. So we're gonna have a right click, create JavaScript, and this is going to be player audio. And we can open that script up in MonoDevelop. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a jumping sound to our player. Okay, it's gonna play once and only one time, and that's what we're gonna do once it opens. So here we are in our script. Let me zoom in so you guys can read this. Um, what we're going to check for is if the player um, pushes a button, the jump button, which is currently the space bar. So we're going to say if input dot get key up jump. Actually, I think it's a button. Let me go back to Unity and check it. The way you can map your uh, stuff for input is you go to edit, project settings, input. And you have your list of axes, and we have one here labeled jump. And jump is set to the positive button of space. You can change this. You can change it to J or whatever you want it to be. It's a key or mouse button, X axis. And, um, and this is also where you set up your, your joystick control settings. So let's say you wanted to link an Xbox controller. You could add more axes and then link them to the Xbox controller in their controller. But anyway, back to what I was doing, it is jump. Uh, so we'll just try get key up and see if it works. And um, when they press the key up, we need to make sure that audio is not already playing. So if audio dot is playing, I'm sorry, we wanna do a not there. So exclamation point is run. So if the audio is not playing, then we want to go ahead and play the audio. So we just call audio.play. Okay. Actually, I think that's a function. Yep, there we go. So there we go. 
And that will take care of our input as long as that jump button works. We can hop on back to Unity. We'll let it compile the code down here in the bottom right. Don't get any errors, so we can grab our player. Toss that script on there. Uh, where is it? Player audio. Okay. And then we need to add in our audio source now. So we're going to go to component, audio, audio source. We do not want this to play on awake. We do not want it to loop. And we're going to select our audio file as what I named randomize. Okay. And so we can go to the, the, the audio folder and demo this. It's a little robotic noise. I guess that's really horrible for a jump. But anyway, we can go ahead and play our game now. Save our scene. Play it. Oop. Input key name jump is unknown. Okay, so we need to reference, um, let's just say space. Let's see if that works. Clear out our error here and play it now. Okay, I'm going to shut the background music off for now because it's kind of uh, blocking out my jumping. Or I can turn the volume way down on this to say 0.1. Okay, and let's try that. See, so background music shut off. And when I jump, I hear the sound. Okay, so in our script, why we checked if it's playing already is if the player starts slamming the space key a bunch of times, it's going to start playing the track over and over and over and over and over again. So if we comment this out, we can actually try it. Okay, so if I go back here, and I press play now, and I just slam the heck out of the space key, it sounds like I'm shooting a laser gun. Uh, if you can't hear that, just take my word for it. It's horrendous. So that is why we do the check if the audio is playing. Okay? So that's it for a player jump sound. So let's say you wanted to uh, put one in for when the player moves left or right. Then you would just input those for the left and right keys. Uh, say get key um, down. Um, this is so. This is when you're when you're pressing down on the key. If you want to check it for when you're holding the key down, just call get key. Okay, but I'm going to do it for yeah. I'm going to do it for get key, and then I'm going to do um, left, and then right in here is where you would put in. If the audio is playing, you want to play, and you can play um, a, a footstep. So I'll say if audio dot is playing, or if audio is not playing, I want to play. Um, actually, I want to switch the audio sound clip. So I'm going to say audio dot. Uh, where is it? You can change it. If that's in here. Audio.clip is equal to footsteps. Actually, let's just say bong. And so we're going to define this at the top. Bar bong is an audio video clip. That used to be a data type. Hang on a second, let me figure this out. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, yep, I was right. It is a data type. I just didn't capitalize it. That's it, yep. So bong is an audio clip. I'm going to get rid of start here. So in the editor, in Unity's window, we're going to assign a new sound to this. And then when we press space, we need to tell it what audio clip it should use. So audio.clip is equal to jump. Okay, so then we're going to go up here, and we're going to say var jump is audio clip okay so let's save that script oh i guess we need to play that down there sorry almost forgot that part audio dot play 
Okay, so if the user presses a space button to jump, it will play that sound. Otherwise, it will play this. If the audio is currently busy playing the jump sound, it will not play the bong sound. If it's busy playing bong, it will not play jump. So let's go on out to our Unity here, make sure that our code compiles and we don't get any errors. And you will notice that our uh, player audio, if I shrink the audio source here and find our, oh, we're on the camera, sorry. Here we go. Our player audio now has two settings for it. So bong and jump. So I can drag randomize down to jump. And for the bong, we're gonna go create a new sound. And I'm gonna show you where my sound came from. And that is from a wonderful tool. Oh, there's Unity's reference. A wonderful tool called BFXR. This is great for making 8-bit sounds and stuff from like the old Commodore and Nintendos. And it can make all kinds of cool and happy noises. Ow, that hurts my ears. Um, let's say I want to make a bong noise, so I'm going to lower the frequency. And you can adjust all these settings. Uh, I want the frequency slide up. I want the sustain time up. Ow, that hurt my ears. Okay, there we go, that's a bong. Okay, so now what I can do is export the wave and save it as whatever you want to name it. I'm gonna name it bong. Okay, and now if I go into Unity, I have a bong right there. Well, I have a bong sound right there. So in our game, we can take the 3D sound portion off bong and hit apply. And on our player object, we can um, click and drag, randomize down there, and bong, and then save our scene. And now if we play the game, if I move to the left, you can hear the bong sound. And it just keeps playing it over and over and over again. But if I jump, it won't play bong until, I, until it's done playing the jump sound. So there you go. That's all there is to that in audio sounds. So just remember, you need to have audio sources. And in the script, you can change the audio clip through code. So you don't need like 8 million audio sources on one object. You can use one audio source to play multiple sounds. Um, if you wanted to take it out so that it would play bong. Actually, no, I don't think you can do that. Yeah, anyway. So one audio source, lots of sounds. This code will help you do it. Uh, background music does not need a script at all. So lots of fun there. And, uh, and don't forget BFXR. It's great. It's free. You can download it to run off the internet on your computer. It will install Adobe Air for you. So just uh, don't worry about it. And, uh, and, and enjoy. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for next time.